The WV women's soccer team continues to win and reach new heights in the national rankings. Just how far will they go? I'm Justin Moore. And I'm Sarah Wells. We'll show you a WV team that's made up of many different cultures. And right here at home, local runners are making huge strides in competing. All these stories and more are coming up next on this edition of Mountaineer Playbook. The WVU women's soccer team continues to soar this season. It's reached its highest ranking in the program's 20-year history. And Sarah, they are currently ranked number three in the National Soccer's Coaches Association of America poll. It's the highest ranking in the Big 12 Conference, but Coach Nikki Izzo-Brown says the ranking doesn't mean much this early in the season. The coach is happy for the recognition, but wants to have the same high ranking at the end of the year. Leading scorer Michaela Abam says there is no reason the team can't come out on top, having all the qualities it takes to win. The team has won three straight Big 12 Conference titles, but is still trying for its first NCAA championship. And while the women's soccer team looks to compete in its 16th straight NCAA tournament, the women's basketball team is hoping to return after missing out on it last year. That's right, Sarah. And with the women's basketball team being the sixth youngest in the nation, I got the chance to find out what the young players did to sharpen their skills this summer. The Lady Mountaineers recently spent 10 days in Europe playing four different international opponents to prepare them for the upcoming season. I do have to step up because the young kids don't know, they don't like have the experience of a college game yet, so just um, stepping up more is what I definitely got from this. WVU was victorious in all four games and team leader Bria Holmes believes it was a valuable experience for the team. Everybody's not used to playing with everybody, so you know, you have to work on a lot of things and get everybody on the same page. So I think it benefited us a lot. Although the Mountaineers are used to playing in Morgantown, they brought their stifling defense overseas with them. During their four-game international trip, the Mountaineers forced 112 turnovers, which is more than their last eight games right here at the WVU Coliseum. The Mountaineers outscored their opponents 283-204 to in their four-game trip, and Holmes wants to continue to build off that success heading into the regular season. At least get into the NCAA tournament this year, win the Big 12, um, just overall have a great senior season, and hopefully my teammates are behind me. West Virginia will begin their season on October 31st in an exhibition match against the Shepherd Rams at the WVU Coliseum. This year's European trip was the third taken under coach Mike Carey. It marked just the second time a WVU women's basketball team has gone undefeated while playing internationally. The Mountaineers hope to improve on the 2014-2015 season, where they finished with an overall record of 23-15 and 7-11 and in the Big 12. WVU teams are not just traveling internationally, Sarah, but recruiting from around the world. That's right, Justin. For the men's soccer team, almost a quarter of their team is from different countries. Reporter Ali Brandfast found out how this team is a melting pot of different cultures. With players from seven different countries, the men's soccer team has the second most international players on any WVU sports team. Senior New Zealand native Ryan Kane thinks the support of his team made his move halfway across the world a lot easier. Like there'll be times throughout my whole time here where I'll just be a little bit sad, homesick I guess. But I mean, they've become fewer and farther between become so close with the guys on the team that it's just an easy transition. But for other players, coming to play in America means overcoming some serious hurdles. Beginning I had like problems with the language, but they did great, they helped me a lot, and by this I don't have any problems anymore. Players from all these countries come together right here on this field to play the game they love. All these different cultures bring a unique dynamic to these players on and off the field. I think it's it's invaluable to be able to say that you've got an opportunity to live with a Brazilian, a German, a Jamaican um, and, and have those kind of uh, long lasting friendships for, for eternity. And I think by exposing them to different cultures, different people, different backgrounds, uh, we're setting them up for what real life is going to be at the end of the day. The game is played differently all over the world, but Coach LeBlanc and the players work to find the best way for their team to represent on the pitch. There is a lot of differences. It's a lot of, lot more athletic here, like uh, the speed of play, as I said, the physicality, and the, the kind of players you get. So uh, it's difficult to adapt to the game, but once you do, you're at home. That's awesome. I mean, everyone brings their own little their own little culture to the game, so it's cool to just be able to combine with people from different areas. 
Most of the international players are not sure if they'll be staying in the U.S. or going home after they graduate. That was Ali Brandfast reporting. The international players have shown to be a good asset to the men's soccer team so far this season. They have combined for a total of 14 points. And that will prove helpful as the men's soccer team hopes to return to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2011. For international athletes, coming to WVU means traveling and far. But the track and field team is gaining success. From runners that call Morgantown, their home. Brooke Chaplin reports on what it means for two members of the team to run for their hometown school. Running up hills is common in Morgantown, and WVU Athletics is a reason why. As runners grow up here, they watch the Mountaineers compete. This motivates locals to try and attend. WVU is always like who we went to go see and everything, so I knew from like a really young age that that's where I wanted to go. Over the past five years, eight runners have decided to stay local. Sophomore Millie Palladino says that it just felt right to be in Morgantown. I learned to love running in this community and with all the people here, and so it's hard to leave a place where you are surrounded by people who won't ever let you settle for less than you can be. Palladino and her other local teammates can be seen as lucky. These runners are able to represent the college they grew up rooting for. It's awesome. It makes like everything like even better. Like every success, just like a little bit sweeter. Like being here and knowing that like, yeah, it's like I chose to come here, but this is where I'm from. The success of local runners has been huge for WVU. Karikas has been part of a relay team that won first place at the PSU National this past January. And with each new season on this very track, local runners are helping their team advance a little bit further. Morgantown's high schools play a big role in the continuous success of local runners. And it's what makes recruiting to WVU competitive. When we look at our team right now, and, and, and as I'm kind of expecting our top seven for the year, we're looking at four or five just from this area. One of the big things WVU represents is pride, so it's really important to be happy where you are and be proud of what you're doing for the place you are in. These local athletes bleed blue and gold, and that's what makes running for WVU special. Brooke Chaplin, Mountaineer Playbook, Morgantown. After signing in 2014, Paladino became the ninth member of the WVU cross country and track team to hail from West Virginia and the sixth from Morgantown. Runners from Morgantown have gone on to become All-Americans, compete in the Olympics, and even run in the national track and field meet in Eugene, Oregon. The WVU gymnastics team returned to practice this month, and one gymnast is picking up right where she left off after last season. I found out how junior Nicolette Sobota plans to help the Mountaineers to another successful season. It's not often that a college athlete shines during the beginning years of their four-year career, but when they do, it's something special. Junior WVU gymnast Nicolette Sobota has done that and still has two more years to improve. The past few years have gone by a little too quick. It's like crazy that I came in as a freshman and I did all around like was not expected at all. Swoboda competed as an all-around gymnast during the majority of her first two seasons, and her 39.2 all-around career high is the highest on the team. WVU gymnastics coach Jason Butts says Swoboda is always someone you can count on. How do you describe Nicolette? She's the one that you want on your team on game day. You know, she's that competitor. And uh, even if she's having some trouble in the gym and practice, you know on, on competition day that she's going to show up and give it 150%. And uh, so I have no doubt that she's going to do that again for us this year. Swoboda finds most of her success on the vault and owns a career high 9875. She also placed in the top five in six of the events last season. How do you improve when you're already at the top of your game? For Swoboda, getting better starts with going back to basics. Stick my landings and like keep my form good, but I just want to go out there and show them what like I got. Just do Mountaineer gymnastics like I've been for the past two years. All of Swoboda's records have been set on WVU's Coliseum floor, but she will look to improve during the team's six road matches this season. Coaches admire Sobota's resiliency and positive attitude in competition, saying she is someone who takes instruction well. She will use those skills when she debuts a new dismount on the balance beam in the upcoming season to go along with her strengths on the floor and vault. Straight ahead, we'll highlight some superstar players here at WVU. Also, the annual Gauley River Race was held recently, and our own Andrew Seeley was there to experience the Rapids. We'll take you there. When this edition of Mountaineer Playbook continues,
every journey starts with a first. first. The WV women's volleyball team has started their season off strong under a new head coach, but one of their star players almost never started playing to begin with. Reporter Jordan Kramer has more on how a chance encounter led her to have a successful career at WVU. 1,389 miles away from home, senior middle blocker Kalia Wells has found where she belongs right here in the Mountain State. I got to do something that I absolutely love. I mean, I love playing volleyball. And while Wells has spent her college years doing what she loves, it was a chance encounter that introduced her to the sport at all. And the volleyball coach was kind of known, and he saw how tall I was once going to a basketball camp, mind you, with my dad, and he asked my father, could I uh, come to his volleyball camp? Wells spent several years trying to balance the two sports, but when she realized she could have a collegiate career in volleyball, she quickly ditched basketball and began to set up her future. As a senior, Wells is looking to her future once again. Although graduating in May, her time in the classroom isn't over just yet. Wells will be pursuing a master's degree in industrial relations in hopes of working in human resources. I have a lot of training here on the volleyball court, you know, just working with teams and uh, being a leader, I guess, on a team and, you know, trying to help others out and just help develop a uh, company. So I'm not working with a company, but I do get to work with a, uh, a program. Wells doesn't only aspire to use her experiences in volleyball in the corporate world, but also to help girls in the position she was in just four short years ago. To be able to help uh, high school girls who are transitioning to coll or collegiate sports, you know, there's a, I know I was super scared when I was looking for schools and trying to figure out how does this work. No matter what Wells pursues in her future, one thing is certain. She will always belong here in West Virginia. Jordan Kramer, Mountaineer Playbook, Morgantown. Last season, Wells recorded 100 kills and 60 blocks and 94 set appearances for the Mountaineers. She also recorded a season best, five blocks on three separate occasions. Her experience will prove valuable now that the team has entered Big 12 play as she is only one of two seniors on the team. Every September, the Army Corps of Engineers opened the Summersville Dam, creating some of the best whitewater rapids in the country. Our own Andrew Seeley traveled down to the Gauley River to find more about this famous race for some of the most experienced raptors. The Upper Gali River, considered a mecca for whitewater paddlers all over the world, the Upper Gali has five huge Class 5 rapids. Each year, the best of the best in whitewater travel to southern West Virginia for a race appropriately named the Animal. We have past national champions, current national champions, past Olympic paddlers. For many professional kayakers, the best part about the Upper Gali is its versatility. You can literally do every single thing you want to on this river. But it isn't just the pros showing up to race the animal. With enough experience in the water, anybody is welcome to give it a try. If you're a student at WVU and you're looking to get into a whitewater boat, you can check out the ORC, or Outdoor Rec Center. They've got trips going all the time. In fact, they've got two trips going this October. It's not just for elite athletes, it's open to everybody. So it's like a pro-am event. Anybody can come and compete. To learn more about the animal and the Upper Gali River, or to check out the winning race times, just head to the link at the bottom of your screen. That was Andrew Seeley reporting. The Upper Gali River race has been in existence for over 20 years and sees up to 120 paddlers annually. Rafting the Upper Gali River definitely isn't for the faint of heart, Sarah. An experienced paddler should always be accompanied by a professional guide. Here on Mountaineer Playbook, we bring you all things sports related at West Virginia University. And in every episode, we highlight the top five athletes here at WVU. So for this week on Mountaineer Playbook, here's our superstar players. Five, Michaela Abam is the women's soccer team's leading goal scorer with seven goals so far this season. Number four, Maylis Kisk is an international shooter on the rifle team and five-time All-American. 
Number three, freshman soccer goaltender Alec Borner has started his career with seven saves, the most by a goaltender in a match this season. Number two, Habiba Shaker was named to the Tribe invite after her performance in the William & Mary Invitational. And number one, former cross-country runner Megan Metcalf Wright. She was just inducted into the WVU Sports Hall of Fame. And that wraps up our top five players of the week, Justin. Well, that's going to do it for us here on this edition of Mountaineer Playbook. Make sure to visit us online at our website. You can also check us out on Time Warner Cable at 6.30 a.m. and p.m. in North Central West Virginia, Monday to Friday. I'm Justin Moore. And I'm Sarah Wells. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mountaineer Playbook.